Hello and welcome everybody to tonight's presentation of UGA Ice Dogs Hockey. I'm Torin Smith. With me as always, Joe Kopshow and Ren Grimsley. We are coming to you live from the Columbus Civic Center in Columbus, Georgia, where the Ice Dogs are on the road to take on the Auburn Tigers. As we get set for the opening face-off here, Joe, what is your key to the game tonight? If I had to pick one key of the game, it's got to be UGA getting better on the power play. So far this season, only one power play goal. They, and they have around 50 penalty minutes, so they've been on that opportunity a lot and only one goal, and that's really what decided the series last year. UGA went 3-0-1 against Auburn. Eight of their goals in the entire series, making up 47%, were on that power play, while Auburn had zero power play goals. So that was the difference last year. That's what I'm expecting to make a difference in this game in Torn. UGA Ice Dogs, that's something they were so good at last year, they got to get back to it. Yeah, still feeling out the new power play unit with the with the big presence of Matt Bigda missing after his graduation. As we get set for the opening face-offs, we'll take a look at the starting lineups for each team. For the Tigers, it's Lange, Fleet, and Runchi up front, Willoughby Ray and Patillo on D, and Cam Denk in goal. As the face-off is won by the Dogs, we are go here from Columbus. Starting for Georgia is Leighton Poole and Alex Strauss on defense. And the top line of Mazaros, Punzenberger, and Donato up front. And, of course, the big man in goal, Ryan Testino, as that one just deflects off his stick and down into the corner. First shot of the game going to the Tigers. You mentioned special teams a big factor in this game, Joe. Big start right here for Auburn, though, five on five. As there's a good shot. Strauss without a stick. It goes down into the corner. Puck at the side of the goal. Mazaros digging for it. Donato comes up with it for Georgia. Takes a big check down in the corner, though. Here's a shot from up top. Just goes wide of the goal, off the stick of Willoughby Ray. Georgia trying to get it out. Punzenberger skies it out to center. Mazar also glove it down, and he'll skate it right down into the Auburn zone. Here's Donato. He takes a check. His shot was deflected, and he'll go out of the zone. Gannon forced to regroup for the Dogs. Nice pass from Donato. Here's Gannon streaking to the net, walking in. His shot just goes through the crease. Punzenberger picks it up in the corner, looking for someone in front. No one there for Georgia, though as they are in the midst of a change, and this puck will leave the zone. Auburn flips it down into the near corner. That was Lange. They'll get a change here as Georgia regroups it inside their defensive zone. Here's Burnett. Parente tips it down into the corner. Rimmed around the boards. Gannon unable to keep it at the blue line. He almost got over there, but he couldn't keep the line as Auburn's trying to break it out back the other way. A long stretch pass was tipped at the Auburn blue line. Here's Hedquist, turns it over in the high slot. Here's a chance for Auburn. Henry with the shot, he scores! Noah Henry waltzes down from the slot and makes it 1-0 Auburn. Yeah, just a bad turnover right in the defensive zone there, right in the high crease, and Noah Henry is a guy that you just can't do that with. We're going to see a lot of Noah Henry in this game at that forward start. Jake Fleet gets the start tonight, but they're both going to have short shifts that they relieve each other on, and Noah Henry comes on with fresh legs, gets that puck, and puts it in a good backhand just getting over Testino. And that's what happens when two minutes in you have a three-shot difference. Auburn at three shots. They put the first one on the board. So a bad turnover in front from the rookie, James Hedquist, leads to the first goal of the game as Henry puts the Tigers up 1-0 early. This one will be just enough for icing, so we'll get a face-off inside the Auburn zone. Georgia trying to get something going now and get a little momentum after that early goal. Yeah, that certainly is something Georgia hasn't had to deal with. Last season, we saw those defensive zone turnovers a lot. This season, not as much, so we'll see how Georgia can respond. They haven't been down much all season, the only time in that South Carolina game, so we'll see how they respond against their out-of-state foes. Big face-off win from Eberle. His shot, or the shot from Adler, just goes wide. Stewart able to hold it at the half wall. Eberle holds up for a minute. He'll skate it out to the point, but it's tipped on the way to Martin. He's able to punch it back in deep. Good defensive play there from Daly. Here's a chance in front. They score! David Eberle right out front, and he ties it. Wow, oh wow, 25 seconds pass and another one finds the back of the net. Eberly shoots, he scores as it comes out in front. A great pass from behind the net. Eberly's second goal this season, two for number two, and we're tied. We didn't think it would maybe go this way so early. We thought these defenses would hold out a little longer. Instead, an offensive showcase already. So it's 1-1 at... Just about two minutes gone in the game here. Like you said, Joe, not used to, not how we're used to these games going, especially with these two goaltenders. Very tightly played matchups last year, but 
maybe we'll have a little bit of scoring tonight. Yeah, Testino and Dank. Testino, of course, for the Dogs. Dank for Auburn have been so good. Here's Bill Martin walking down, and Adler was just off sides near the Auburn bench to look at a faceoff at center ice. Well, we mentioned how the Dogs haven't been down too often this season. That's the exact type of response you want. They scored three unanswered against the Cox. We'll see if they can try and match that. That's going to be a heavy total with this offensively potent Auburn team. Faceoff won cleanly by Duchman. Tigers trying to break it out from their own zone. Stretch pass just misses the tape, and this one will be just enough for icing. Franklin will plead his case, but the puck will come all the way back down into the Tigers zone. How about these Auburn jerseys there, Joe? These new navy blues? Yeah, they introduced these over the summer, and they're certainly something to look at. I like that they stray away from the orange. It can be a little bit blinding sometimes when you have it as the main color, those dark navy blues. It really makes the orange pop. I think that's the way to do a jersey, a good jersey matchup tonight with Georgia's Whites. The first time I believe we're seeing that this season. Absolutely, Joe. First time we've seen them, unless you tuned into our red and white scrimmage game at training camp. Face off to the left of Dink, and it's won again by Duchemin. As the Tigers will set it up from their own zone. Nice pass to Duchemin on the breakout. He takes a check from Strauss at center ice. Puck goes down into the corner. Patch chasing it. He stood up there by Poole. And here come the dogs back the other way. Robbie Whitwer for Georgia carries it through center. Fans on the pass, though, and turns it over at center, but he, re he gets it right back. Trying to walk around the defender, but it's taken away. And the Tigers chip it right back into the Georgia zone. Just announced the goal for Eberly, and assisted by Sam Adler. So that's Adler's first point of the season. Digging for it in the corner is Poole. He's fighting for it with Sparago. The Tigers come up with it, but there's a good check in the corner from Strauss. They take it back, though. The Tigers setting up on the perimeter, pass up to the point. Misses its Mark Henderson, so that it'll go back out to center ice. Fired back in, but not deep enough as Strauss corrals it. And here comes Donato back the other way for Georgia. Cross ice pass. He's got Mazaros trying to step around the last man, but he couldn't get around the skate. Mazaros regains control, plays it back down the wall for Punzenberger. Punzenberger on the half wall. Looking to go up to the point. It got caught up in the feet of the defender, and the Tigers will take it right back the other way. Here comes Catalano. By himself, he'll just fire it in on goal. Testino plays it to the corner as Auburn gets a change. That was a really good shift from Auburn. That's a line you don't really expect too much. That's where they struggled, the third and fourth line. So you'll take no shots on that shift. Fired around the boards. Punzenberger in on the forecheck hard. Donato in to help him out. Punzenberger still with it. Donato now in the corner. Looking out front for Mazzaros. His shot just goes wide. He was open in the crease for a split second, but he just missed the net as this one comes back around the other side. But the Tigers gain control. Clean breakout here as Fleet takes it back the other way. Here's a chance for Auburn walking in. That shot tipped off the stick of Burnett. It'll go down in the corner. Tigers regain control. Puck got stuck in the feet there, so Burnett able to pull it back out, and the dogs come back the other way. Punzenberger walks on to it. Long shift here for Georgia. Here's a chance looking for Mazaros. He's trying to sneak it back door, but a good save by Dink to hold on to it. That was a great pass by Punzenberger. I don't think Mazaros thought there was any way that puck was going to get to him through that tight slot. Instead, Punzenberger finds a way, and because of it, Mazaros wasn't exactly ready. Good job by Cam Dink to cover in an offensive zone draw for Hedquist to try and make up for their early turnover. Hedquist and Henry face-to-face. -face. Cleanly won by the freshman Hedquist, but the shot picked up in the slot by Willoughby Ray. Hedquist couldn't hold the zone. Willoughby Ray will skate it back the other way. He takes a shot, easily blockered away by Testino. Martin lays a check on Willoughby Ray. Puck still bouncing around down there in the corner. Good physicality so far for Georgia. That's been their MO all season so far. They will try to capitalize on some opportunities here on the forecheck. There's a chance for Parente in front. Turnaround shot, hits a skate. Another shot, Hedquist with a save by Dank. Here's Hogan with it. Parente gets it at the top of the point. Crawford goes down, trying to regain control. He does. Hedquist in to help him out. But the Tigers chop it around, and they'll get it back the other way. Daly fires at cross ice. But it's taken away by Georgia. Here comes Parente back the other way. He'll lay it down in the corner. Crawford chasing it now. Rimmed around the boards. Hedquist lays a check. Parente stops it at the point. A good four check here for the dogs on this shift. Lots of zone time, but nothing to show for it so far. As Crawford tries to set up on the perimeter, he's taken to the wall by Willoughby Ray. 
And Hedquist turns it over. It comes back the other way. Here's Bay. Chuck Bay, we got a penalty coming up here on Georgia, it looks like. I think it's going to be Hedquist. So his night gets a little worse. A tough start for the rookie as the dogs touch up. And it'll likely be Hedquist headed to the box. Yeah, if I had to imagine that'd be holding. Hedquist committed the turnover in the offensive zone. Couldn't get the pass back to the point and then just trying to skate back, make a play for his defender to pick up the puck. I think he just got a hold. So headed to the box, James Hedquist, two minutes for holding. And here we go, special teams, Joe. Like we said, this will be the first power play of the game. Auburn had no power play goals against Georgia last year. They had one shorthanded goal, but they are looking to improve in the man advantage category as Georgia wins the first faceoff inside their defensive zone. Taken around at the point by Runchi. He'll shoot it from the point, blocked by Bardo, rebound, fired back into the corner. Auburn trying to set something up. Good penalty killing so far by Georgia, keeping them to the outside. Sloppy pass there as Runchi regains control, fires it across to his partner. Here's a shot from the point. That one's tipped in front, but it just goes wide. Bardo digging for it, fighting with Fleet. Strauss in to help out. Bardo trying to just pin it to the boards. Three Auburn players down on that side. As Fleet stops up behind the net, he's taken to the wall by Strauss. To the half wall, back up to the point. Here's a shot. Finds its way through. They score. Caleb Patillo, it's a power play goal. And the Tigers regain the lead. This is not a start that I think Ice Dogs fans were expecting. Caleb Patillo gets the puck, and I think that's what the Ice Dogs have been weak at on their penalty kill. They've been able to kill off a lot of time, but when shots come, they're high-quality shots. Patillo doesn't miss his chance, and the defender buries it in the back of the net, and it's all of a sudden 2-1 Auburn back on top. That's one thing that the Dogs have struggled with this year and last year is clearing guys out of the front of the net. Bad turnovers in front and lots of traffic in front are what lead to a lot of the Ice Dogs' goals against. We've seen that tonight on the Hedquist turnover and that shot finding its way through the screen. That's just a great shot from Patillo. So Georgia will need to shore up the defense just a little bit as this one is held to the outside by Burnett. And he'll get control inside his own corner, plays it out to center. Patillo stops it, though, and he'll fire it right back in and get a change. Right now, Auburn is just thoroughly outplaying Georgia. This one won't be enough for icing as it's picked off by Adler, walking down from the point. Adler with a shot, rebound. He's hooked up in front. No call. That one looked like it might have been a hook on Auburn as Adler couldn't get the shot away, but the Tigers come right back the other way. Sparago plays it down into the corner. Testino chips it away from the front of the net. Eberly, the goal scorer for Georgia, turns it over in front again, though. Here's Noah Henry looking for someone in front. It's poked to the outside by Burnett, and the Dogs regain control. Here comes Gannon down the left wing side, trying to just get it in deep as he fires it across the ice. Mazaros walks onto it at the half wall, shoots it from the outside, hits the side of the net. Donato gets it, fires it right back in behind the goal. Mazaros with it at the side of the net. Here's a chance in front. Gannon trying to walk to the crease, but it's kept to the outside. Picked off by Punzenberger on the clearing attempt. His shot goes wide. At the side of the net, Mazaros looking for the tip. Gannon sidesteps the check, but he gets a piece of him. That's a good physical play by Callan Daly. And the Tigers trying to get it into the zone. Hagen gets it for Georgia, though. And he'll play it up for Donato. Lots of physicality from Auburn. Like you said, Joe, they're outclassing the dogs in all facets of the game so far, as Willoughby Ray will skate it through center. Linesman goes down hard. Looks to be okay. The Tigers trying to lay this one in deep. Hagen couldn't get a glove on it as they fire this one back up to the slot. Here's a shot from Willoughby Ray off the stick of Punzenberger. Georgia trying to get it out. Donato finally does, and he'll go across the ice for Punzenberger. Looking back door for Mazaros. Nice move. Punzenberger back door pass. Shot saved by Dink. And the rebound cleared to the boards. Donato couldn't corral it. And Pats will skate it back the other way for Auburn. There's a hard check at center ice. We got a penalty coming up here on Auburn as Donato went down hard. We'll see what the call is. Looks like they're taking number 10, Brooks Franklin. 
And now here is Georgia's chance to respond. Power play goal was scored by Batillo. We mentioned how Auburn had no power play goals against Georgia last year. Georgia had eight. They'll be looking for one here early to even it up and try and make this first 10 minutes of play look a little bit cleaner than it actually has been. So first power play opportunity for Georgia, a different unit than we're used to seeing out there as Dan Bardo will take the faceoff with Hedquist and Parente on the wings. So head coach John Camp changing up the lines a little bit here on the power play. Georgia's first man advantage of the game. Auburn scored on theirs like you mentioned, Joe. As Hedquist gets it at the side of the net, he'll walk it right in front, saved by Dank, and he will hold on to it. Hedquist looking to extend his goal streak. He's got three in the first three games of the season. Good start for the rookie. Yeah, and we mentioned that Hedquist's bad turnover caused the first goal of the game, so he'd love to get in that positive column no matter what he can do. If he could put it in the back of the net or give someone else an open look, I'm sure he'd take either. So another face-off to the left of Dank. It's won by the Tigers and quickly fired down the ice by Patillo. All right, you'll likely see Poole take this puck and bring it all the way up. It's something that George has been trying over and over. Here comes Poole in stride down the right wing side, trying to step around Patillo, and he does. Takes it down into the corner. Poole still with it, drops it off for Parente, who takes a check. Fires it right back to the point for Poole. He'll settle it down. Looking back door for Hedquist. Pass took a minute to get there, and Dink pounces on it. Loose puck. They blow the whistle a little bit early. Yeah, Dank was not on top of that, so Parente will plead his case. What a pass from Poole there all the way right to Dank's left. It was a great pass and a good control by Hedquist. The second touch on it, however, by Hedquist just brought it a little too far out. That allowed Dank to put it behind his net, leading to the inadvertent whistle. That'll lead to another offensive zone draw. 125 left on the man advantage for Georgia. Not a lot of shots so far on the power play as they're trying to set this one up. Poole with a drive, saved by Dank. Rebound loose in front. Couple extra whacks at it from Bardo, and he'll take it from the Auburn defense. They take exception to a couple of extra whacks at the glove. Yeah, Bardo was a little bit late on that one, but I believe he's also the one that got the tip out in front, so he wanted to finish. If Dank does have a downside, he's an excellent goalie in a uh, around a 900 save percentage last year, 893. His one struggle last year was with screens in front of him, seeing those shot from the point. So you're not really gonna stuff him like Bardo tried to do there. It's going to be those shots from pool and deep, those slap shots with a screen out in front. Yeah, Georgia has to get traffic in front of Dank. Don't let him see the puck and get those shots like they just did from pool at the point. Face off to the right of Dank. And it's won by the Tigers, again, fired out. So they will take a few more seconds off the clock here. Nice stutter step move down there in the corner by Lange. He'll go down though and Georgia will get it back and get started on the power play rush here. Here comes Hedquist trying to step around his man. Gets through, Hedquist down into the corner. Looking for help out in front. Drops it back off, Poole able to stop the clearing attempt. He'll play it to his partner Gannon. Dusts it off at the point. Poole with another drive, tipped in front by Bardo, but it just goes wide. Hedquist regains control in the corner. Looking for options, plays it back to the point. Gannon walks the line, back to Poole. Fumbles the pass, couldn't get the shot away. Trying to clear it are the Tigers, but it's kept in front. Bardo unable to hold on to it though, and it's fired right back out by the Tigers who will get a change. Bardo had another great tip out in front, an excellent job by him. 20 seconds left on the power play, shame. He couldn't get that tip in, just went a little wide. I like that change in the power play line there from Coach Camp. Bardo was, oh, there's a big check as Poole goes into the stanchion, losing his stick. A good check there by TJ Runchi as the physicality ramps up just a little bit. Three seconds left on the power play for Georgia as the penalty expires. Henry will take the man out of the box. We are back to five on five. Decent power play, but need to put the puck in the back of the net, obviously there, but not too shabby. Good opportunities. Here's Mazaros in behind his own goal. Good forechecking here from the Tigers. This top line of Georgia unable to get it out. As there's a good pad save from Testino. Hogan corrals it, looking for some help. Henry in hard on him. Great forechecking and good zone time here from the Tigers. Georgia trying to get it out, and they finally do. Here's Punzenberger. Quickly on him on the back check, though, was Daly. 
Nice play there by Mazaros to keep that one in. Donato on the half wall, plays it to the point. Drive by Hagen, that one bounces off the stick, easily saved by Dink, and he will squeeze it. Yeah, good job by that. Save right there, Dink just squeezes it after it bounces up in the air. That one can be a little bit of a knuckleball and you're scared that a ice dog is gonna come in and mess with you, so Dink always fearless, like you said, you're not gonna stuff him. So a good job by him to keep his head cool and another offensive zone draw, the dogs have struggled. This is the best line the dogs have had all night though, this second line of Stewart, Eberly, and Adler, the goal scorer, Eberly, of course. As this one finds its way down to the Georgia zone, Eberly plays it back to his D-man, Martin. Bill Martin across to his partner. Here's a stretch pass. Eberly in stride. He'll take it down the right wing side. Eberly on his backhand looking for someone in front. He'll take it in behind the goal. He's got Stewart and Adler in front. Eberly drops it off. Stewart on the half wall. Adler now in the corner. Works it around the other side of the net. Drops it back off for Eberly. Here's the chance. Stewart looking for the shot in front. A weird angle, and he couldn't get it cleanly. Good keep there by Hagen, but he'll just play it weakly in on goal, and Dink will smother that one. I like the addition of Stewart to that line. We haven't seen him all night. He has the most fresh legs out there. I like that. He unfortunately whiffs a little bit. The puck was on its edge, and he just couldn't chip it in how he wanted. Got right out in front, but I like Stewart's addition, of course. A tough man, laid a ton of checks last week, so I think that's a good spot to put him when he needs to come in and give this team some fresh legs. So face off to the left of Dink. And it's won by the Dogs. Parente plays it to the point. Goes back into the corner off the stick of Poole. Rimmed around the boards, Hedquist looking to lay a check. He does, takes it off the stick of Kemner, but it's taken away by the other Tigers D-man. This one trying to go off the glass and out. It hits the wall as it goes over the glass. So we'll get a face off inside the Tigers zone. 6.50 left to go here in the first. It's 2-1 Auburn. And they've got most of the momentum right now, Joe. Yeah, despite the lack of goals, Auburn is obviously outplaying. But the lack of goals in the past five minutes, I think Georgia has started to turn it around, need to keep the pedal to the metal. Face off won by the Tigers. Strauss coming down from the point. Crawford chops it in deep. Hedquist unable to pin it behind the goal, and the Tigers will get it right back out the other way. Here's a chance for the Tigers walking in. Here's a shot saved by Testino off the stick of Duchemin, who goes down hard at the side of the net. Slow to get up is Duchemin, but he'll stay on the ice. As that one took a weird bounce right in front of the slot. Parente able to get it out, though, and Crawford will just lay this one down into the corner. Hard check in the corner from Hedquist. Gets the glass rumbling down there. Broken stick on the play. It looks like it's Duchemin. There's a, there's a penalty down there in the corner. Crawford slow to get up as it looks like it might be boarding on number nine, Alex Duchemin. Duchemin will head to the box. And as mentioned, UGA only one power play goal of the year. Had a first good power play, but was unable to put the puck in the back of the net. They get another opportunity. We'll see what line they bring out as Torn mentioned, had a bit of an interesting line centered around Dan Bardo in front of the net. Bardo is on the ice, so expect him to be fighting out in front trying to block Dank's view like he did last time. Captain Henry Lange arguing about Duchemin's penalty, but he'll eventually rest. Bardo, the junior from Long Beach, He's gonna be digging in front for this puck and then trying to win it and move quickly right in front of the net to scream dank as Auburn tries to figure out their lines. Here's a big spot for Georgia here in this first period. They've come out pretty flat so far. Trying to get some momentum back here on the man advantage as Bardo and Avery line up for the draw. The refs all night have had problems with how these teams are lining up on the faceoff. And faceoff. There's been a couple of bad bounces there on the drops. Line's been unable to drop them cleanly a few times on that side to the left of Dink, but this one will be cleared. So the penalty roughing to Duchemin as this one goes down into the corner. Hedquist gets it. 
to the right of Denk. He'll dig for it down there in behind the goal. Parente comes up with it. Floats it down in behind Denk once again. Here's Bardo with it. Takes it around the other side. Hedquist in to help him out. Good pressure here from the Dogs. Trying to get it out in front. Here's a chance. Shot just goes wide. As Hedquist goes down hard, Gannon settles the puck at the point. 116 left on the man advantage for Georgia. Gannon plays it over to Poole. Lots of room. Poole walks it down. Pass over to Hedquist. Couldn't handle it cleanly on the back door again. And the Tigers fire it all the way down the ice, and they'll get a change. That would have been the best shot opportunity of the night. Testino playing the puck up quick. Quick up here for Georgia. Parente gets hammered at the red line. A good check there from number 44, TJ Runchi. Here's a pass across. Punzenberger couldn't settle it. Runchi again stiff arms Parente, but he goes down. Good physicality for Auburn. Here's Parente in the high slot. His shot right into the bread basket of Dink, and he will hold on to it. Yeah, after that kind of broken play on both sides, Parente was left all alone. However, as mentioned, a one-on-one -on -one with Dank is usually going to go his way. So now it'll be Mazaros on the offensive zone draw. He had the best luck of any ice dog last year in these types of situations. Mazaros and Runchi take the draw here. Another bad drop there from the linesman. These pucks aren't coming down cleanly on the faceoffs. Not really in favor of either team. It's just a weird element to add to this game so far in this first period. As Burnett comes up with that puck, Donato with it in stride. He drops it off for Mazaros. Mazaros down the left wing side, drops it back off for Donato. He's got Punzenberger high slot, saved by Dink on the shot from the outside by Donato. Pinned to the boards by Hagen. Ten seconds left on the Auburn penalty as they will likely just pin it for the rest of it. Hagen digs it free, though. Five seconds left on the man advantage. Turnover at the blue line. And this one will be offsides. A lucky break there for Hagen as he almost had a catastrophic turnover to Runchi. Yeah, lucky break, especially with the man coming out of the box. It would have been a 2 on 0 as Rucci would have got the puck and his man would be coming out charging with him. So instead, there'll be a face-off. And now Georgia, like they have been all season, unsuccessful on the power play. Face-off won by the Tigers. They'll chop it in deep. And it will be icing. Didn't hit any dogs on the way there, so face off in the Auburn zone. 3.58 left to go here in the first. Auburn's still up 2-1. to one. Yeah, Auburn has definitely come out and punched Georgia in the mouth. This is something that the Ice Dogs didn't expect. I would expect in four minutes, Coach Campy's going to have a heated discussion with this team. As the Ice Dogs 3-0 on the season, first time they've really been flat. Face off won by Georgia, cleared to the boards by Whitwer, Bardo digging for it in there. Whitwer comes up with it in the corner, but it's taken back to the boards. Two guys aside digging for it in the corner there. Referee telling them to move it as it's played up the wall and here come the Tigers back the other way. Pat's trying to step around Poole, gloves it down, chops it to the boards, Strauss will chop it. Back trying to get it out of the zone, but Franklin comes up with it again for the Tigers. Here's Brooks Franklin, shakes off the check, trying to play it up to the point. Here's Willoughby Ray with it, settles it down, takes the shot, blocked by Strauss as he stretched out the leg to get a piece of that one. Just played out by Bardo, and the Dogs will get a change as the puck goes down into the Tigers' zone. Here's Whitwer hard on the forecheck all by himself. His line mates changing in behind him, and Henry takes it back the other way for the Tigers. Here's a nice move, walking to the net, as it just bounces through the low slot off the stick of Daly. He's taken to the wall by Poole. Here's a clean breakout for Georgia, but it bounces over the stick of Adler. That puck's bouncing around a lot right now. Auburn may be a little bit more used to this ice than the dogs are. They seem to settle it just a little better than the Georgia side. Yeah, obviously didn't have a cut after warm-up, so we'll see maybe in the second period how it plays. Here's Stewart with it for Georgia. He loses it on his own blue line, and he trips on it as well as it goes down into the Auburn zone, and Dink will freeze it. Good job by Stewart, even though he blew a tire, to just get an offensive zone draw. Georgia hasn't been good on it on the night, so they'll have to change something here, but a good job after a mistake when you lose your edge to at least give your team 
a fighting chance on the next possession, next whistle. Eberly and Fleet in to take the draw. Let's see how the judge drops it this time. Another bad drop there. Face off one by Georgia. Fanning on the shot with Stewart, and he'll hear it from the Auburn bench as this one's off the glass and out. Martin trying to walk onto it. He takes it away off the stick of Lange, and here come the dogs back the other way. Eberly down the left wing side. Takes the check as he fanned on the pass. Regaining control is Eberly, though. Poked again off of his tape by Henderson. Taken back in the corner, and we got a penalty. It looks like it's going to be on Eberly. I think a high stick. He apologizes to Henderson. Accidental, of course. But another man advantage for Auburn. Yeah, Eberly immediately looked up and said, dang it, and apologized. So he'll head to the box. Of course, Auburn one for one on the power play. So need a little bit of better penalty killing here from the dogs. We'll see how the drop plays this time. It looks like when he's dropping the puck, Torrin, I don't know how much baseball you watch. Braves have been great this season. He looks like a Miami Marlins pitcher throwing at Ronald Acuna, just trying to hit him right in the back. He is spiking that thing right into the ice. There's another one that bounces on edge. Face off won by the Tigers as they get the power play going. Henry with it. Plays it to his partner, Bay. Back to Henry. Back across. Here's a shot from the point. Blocked by Martin on the outside. Hogan takes it to the boards. Five seconds separate the penalty clock and the game clock. If Georgia is able to kill this one off to the end of the period, they'll have five seconds shorthanded at the beginning of the second. Falling on that one is Callan Daly. Referees or linesman signaling a hand pass. And this one's going to be outside of the Georgia zone. Yeah, I'm not too sure what Daly's plan was there because he looked like he was the one to fall on it without anyone really interfering with him. Obviously on the power play, that's not what you want to do. If you're a defender for the Ice Dogs in this situation, that's kind of the play you go for. Instead, he moves Auburn out of the offensive zone, gives Georgia a chance to win a draw and kill some time here. Face off won by the Tigers. Here's a chance. Daly walking in, saved by Testino, rebound. Loose in front, here's another shot as it just goes over the net. Played in behind the goal, Auburn still with control. Here's Pats with it, back to the point. Henry walking the line, he takes a shot off the stick of Testino and out of play. You know, I think Testino might be kicking himself earlier. I mean, there was nothing he could really do on those first two goals, but there, if he had any doubt in his mind that anything was his fault, it's gone away. That was an excellent first save, and then Torin, that puck wasn't just bouncing around. I think Lange got a stick on it. Testino kicked out that leg, got a second save in a row. That's hard to do on a one on up. Face off one again by the Tigers in the offensive zone, but Parente comes up with it and clears it with a minute left to go in the period. Henry setting up the power play now. Daly steps around Parente. This aggressive Ice Dogs forecheck on the penalty kill has helped them out especially last week against Georgia Tech, but it hasn't done the same thing that it did last week here against the Tigers as Daly skates it in fast down the left wing side, looking for the centering pass, couldn't get it cleanly to Fleet as this one will just barely leave the zone as Parente skates onto it and dumps it in with half a minute left to go in the first. Parente and Henry come together. Henry plays it around the boards. And here come the Tigers back the other way with 20 seconds. Fired cross ice, Ducheman with it. Chips it around, Burnett chasing it down in the corner. Burnett trying to keep him to the outside. Good play there by Burnett as he tosses Ducheman into the boards. Seven seconds left, Georgia will just pin it here. Mazaros will take it to the wall as the, penalty, or as the clock ticks down to zero. That will do it for the first period. After 20, it's two to one Auburn. We will see you right back here for second period action.
Off is won by the dogs, and we are go. Georgia with control. Here's Mazaros down low looking for a shot at the side of the goal. Tip in front, he scores! Josh Mazaros with his second of the game. Two opportunity for the dogs. Steps Here's around Bunsenberger. the Here's a shot, he scores! Will Donato on the pass from Bunsenberger. It's a power play Conway goal. shoots, he scores. He shoots. Down low, Schwanekamp digging for it. Still loose. He walking scores! Uh, he shoots, he scores! Marks Torin, that was what a game. Conway walking in. His shot, he scores! Eklund Conway from the outside. Everyone with a shot, he scores! Down low, back to he scored! Good save by Testino, what a save! In victory formation. Oh, he scores! Three seconds left, two seconds. Flaherty settles it. Here's a shot at the horn and saved by Testino. Ice Dogs win!
Get ready to score big with the Ultimate Ice Dogs fan experience. It's the Red Zone, your one-stop shop for all things Ice Dogs. From jerseys to caps, hoodies, and more, they've got the official gear that will have you looking like a true Ice Dogs legend. So whether you're cheering in the stands or watching from home, gear up in style with the Red Zone at UGAredzone.com. The Red Zone, the official retailer of Ice Dogs merchandise. Our very own Ren Grimsley caught up with Ice Dogs forward David Eberly in between periods. Hello everybody, I'm Ren Grimsley. I'm here with David Eberly. David, you're down 2-1. What needs to change here in the second period to get back on top? Uh, I think it's a momentum thing. We just got to start playing our game again. Started a little bit sloppy out in that period. Um, I mean, I, I, we're lucky to still be in it, but um, you guys just need to get the jump going, um, keep the feet moving, get the pucks in. Awesome. Playing our game again. Started a little bit sloppy out in that period. Um, I mean, I, I, we're lucky to still be in it, but um, you guys just need to get the jump going. Um. I'm here with David Everly. David, you're down 2-1. What needs to change here in the second period to get back on top? Uh, I think it's a momentum thing. We just got to start playing our game again. Started a little bit sloppy out in that period. Um, I mean, I, I, we're lucky to still be in it, but um, you guys just need to get the jump going. Um, keep the feet moving, get the pucks in. Awesome. And David, the dogs have been very successful on the faceoff. You're obviously a big part of that. How much of an advantage is that, or how much does it help y'all in this game? Oh, huge. I mean, if you're able to win it back to the guy that you need to, um, both in the O zone and D zone, it just gives the team a huge advantage to start the playoff. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome back, everybody, to second period action here live from Columbus, Georgia, where the Ice Dogs trail the Auburn Tigers 2-1. to one. And well, I'll throw it over to Joe for our first period recap. Well, Torn, it was a good first period for the Tigers. Unfortunately for the Ice Dogs, they trail 2-1. to one. The goal scorers for the Tigers are number 34, Noah Henry. As puck drop will occur, 34, Noah Henry, and number eight, Caleb Patillo for the Ice Dogs. It was Eberly. So two to one, that's where we stand as the Ice Dogs kill off the remainder of the penalty that spilled over from the first period. We'll take you over to some out of town scores. The UGA D3 team is currently playing the Alabama D3 team up in Pelham and they are trailing one nothing. So it's one nothing Bama up in the northern part of this Alabama state. We're right on the border here in Columbus, Georgia, though. About 40 minutes from the Auburn campus as they win this faceoff inside their own zone. Here's Willoughby Ray. He'll skate it down the left wing side for Auburn in across the blue line. Here's a shot blocked by Strauss right into the shin pad. But it's taken away right at the top of the slot. They'll say there's a hand pass on the play. So faceoff will be outside the zone right in front of the Auburn bench. We apologize for those technical issues as Auburn and UGA got right into it after that clock stop, not too normal in club hockey. We were mentioning off air that the ice looks a little bit worse for wear, which we didn't think it could get any worse after how the puck was bouncing in the first period, but there are cut marks everywhere. Face off won by the Dogs. They'll take it back into their own zone, but it's turned over by Punzenberger. Here's Runchi with it. Big physical presence so far. For Auburn, Runchi has been through this first 20 minutes of this game. As Poole fires this one off the glass. Not out, though, and we got another whistle upcoming. Looks like there is a malfunction with the door down here in the corner. 
likely a faceoff outside of the Georgia zone. And Torin, if you look to the left and right of Testino, there's puddles on both sides of him, kind of on those red circle, on that red circle line approaching him. So interesting here how that will affect him on the near side. Face off one by Georgia. We said that the ice has been a factor so far. A lot of bouncing pucks here for Georgia. Auburn, of course, at home ice. They're a little more used to it. There's Punzenberger with a nice move as he catches an edge at center ice. A little toe pick in the circle. Here comes Willoughby Ray down the left wing side. Shot easily turned aside by Testino. Cleared to the side of the goal. Here's Mazaros with it. He'll play it across for Punzenberger. Mazaros streaking to the back door. Here's a, here's a chance from Punzenberger. Pass misses the tape of Mazaros. He'll get it back, though, in the corner. Looking for Gannon in front. A good play by Runchi to break it up, though, and the Tigers will clear it out to center ice. Nice play by Poole to break that one up, and he'll skate it down the other way on the pass from Donato. Dogs forced to touch up. Donato walks the line. He'll skate it down the right wing side now. Poked off of his stick, and the Tigers get it back out to center. Here's a chance for Lange. He's got a man in front. A good play by Burnett to lay out and block that pass, and here come the dogs back the other way. Will Donato, he's got Punzenberger streaking. Shot turned away by Dink. Looking for the pass off the pad was Donato. Another chance, that one tipped away by the Auburn defender. And cleared, but not out. Second chance clear does go. Donato lets that one go by him to avoid the offsides, but Henderson trying to play it across to his partner, and it comes out back to center ice. Shot in on goal from Gannon. Easily turned aside by Dink and cleared once again. This one should be enough for icing, though it's a foot race. Auburn beats it out. A good play there. Some good hustle from Chuck Bay to beat out the icing. Gannon got a little lazy on the back check there. As another referee goes down, we've seen a couple of blown tires from the officials tonight. Another testament to the bad ice here in Columbus. As this one will just leave the zone. Henry looking for the centering pass, but it goes all the way back into the Auburn end. Here's a chance, Parente walking down. He's got Crawford back door. Pass was behind his feet. Missed the mark. That time was Parente. He's used to Conway being on that side, the right winger, or the right-hander. Crawford in there instead on that wing. As Henry steps around to check, shot from Parente is turned aside by Dink. Goes way up the glass. And this one cleared once again. Should be enough for icing this time. No Tigers in the vicinity. As Gannon skates into it, so we'll have a face-off inside the Auburn zone. And I'm sure in that intermission, Torin, that Coach Campy was giving it to his players a little bit. He can't be too happy with how they played in the first. Two to one after about eight minutes. The Ice Dogs did catch a little bit of fire there at the end, but no goals. So I'm sure, sure Coach Campy is hoping for a vastly different second period. Right now, Ice Dogs winning it a little bit, but still not it up. Not a lot of chances for either side here in the early goings of this second period. As this one's kept in at the point here, Stewart with a chance down low looking for Adler, but a good stick lift from Henry to break that up, and he'll come away with the puck. Pinned at the wall by Eberly though, and he's got it down into the corner. David Eberly, the lone goal scorer for Georgia, plays it to the point. Hoggins settles it, fires it back down into the corner. Stewart chasing. He's taken to the boards that time by Tinshirt. Played up. To the point, Bay comes away with it for the Tigers, and he'll dump it into the near corner and get a much-needed change for the Auburn Tigers. Here's Martin chasing his man. That's Daly with the puck still. Good, strong play from Callan Daly, the rookie for Auburn. He's got four goals and five assists in this short season. Of course, some inflated numbers for the Tigers. They've got a couple of really big wins against University of Alabama at Birmingham as Martin will skate this one just across center ice and fire it down into the zone. The Dogs will get partial change here. Puck in behind Dink. Corralled by Franklin. He shrugs off the check from Eberly. Shot from the point. Sorry, that was Adler that got knocked down at the half wall there. Eberly's pass doesn't make it to the point. He gets it right back, though. Here's Stewart trying to walk it off the wall. Couldn't hold on to the puck, though. Franklin back out to center ice. Takes the check from Stewart. Martin regains control for Georgia. Fires it way up ice. He's got Whitwer looking for the tip. And he gets it down in the zones. The rest of the Ice Dogs change now. Here's a chance. Whitwer turnover in front. He's got Gutman with him. Shot saved by Dink. 
Whitworth couldn't get a move off there. He just had to put it on goal, and Dink easily patted it aside. And here come the Tigers back the other way. Chipped around, pool into the corner. Here's a centering pass, no one there. Whitworth comes up with it. Nice move to step around the four checker as he stood up at the blue line. A good check from Jack Sparago. And it's fired right back into the left of Testino, who's out to play at this time. Leaves it for Poole. Whitworth trying to get it. Nice pass on the breakout for Bardo. Here's Gutman down the left wing side. Trevor Gutman with it. Settles it. Takes the shot easily saved by Dank. Couldn't hold on to it, though. Rebound goes down into the corner. Gutman comes away with it. Plays it to the point. Here's Strauss with it. Looking back door for Gutman. Couldn't handle the pass. It goes off his skate. And you hear the Ice Dogs bench with some frustration at that missed opportunity there. Yeah, we've seen two or three of those for the Ice Dogs. Had a couple backdoor saucer passes get in on this near side last period that just couldn't be controlled. Another one, wide open net. If Gutman can get a stick on that, that's a goal every time. Instead, Ice Dogs will have to keep fighting. A good first six minutes for them, though, with this offensive zone pressure. Face off won by the Dogs. Punzenberger comes up with it, leaves it for Strauss. He'll take a shot through the screen. Rebound bouncing around down low as it's cleared to the boards. Kept in at the line by Poole, though. Good play from the Ice Dogs D-man. As he goes down on the puck, trying to keep it in the zone as it finally leaves the zone. Punzenberger plays it back for Strauss inside his own blue line. Heavy pressure on him from the Tigers. Able to chip it in was Mazaros. Here comes Poole walking onto it. He's got someone back door. Punzenberger with a shot, just goes wide. That one got tipped on the back check. Dink was sprawled out. He had the whole net, Punzenberger, to take that shot. But a great defensive play on the back check by the Tigers. This one cleared, Lands chasing it, and we got an offsides called behind the play for the Tigers. So this one will go back to center ice. Yeah, that was another great opportunity. Punzenberger just can't settle it down enough and shoots a foot or two wide. That's a scenario where maybe if you can stop your momentum, you take an extra half second there and try and settle it down because Dank, no way he's getting up from that split position. So as long as you can settle down, you had all the time in the world, but Punzenberger tries to sneak it in that above that glove side right away and just goes wide as the faceoff is right outside Georgia's zone. Faceoff won cleanly by Mazaros. That's one of the few clean draws we've seen tonight for either side. Puck been bouncing a lot on these drops there. Burnett plays it to Donato on the blue line. He's got Mazaros looking to handle it at the side of the goal, taken away off of his stick, but he regains control. Donato skating around on the half wall. He's got Mazaros in the corner. They'll skate it back up the boards. Looking back door for Gannon. Here's a shot. He scores! Jack Gannon finds the back of the net and ties it for Georgia. Finally, one of those passing sets plays off. Gannon able to receive the puck cleanly this time, and when he catches it on the tape, he puts it in the top of the net. This game is now all knotted up at two after Jack Gannon is able to receive the puck. We mentioned hard to beat Cam Dank one-on-one, -on -one, but when half the net's wide open, it'd be hard for Gannon not to. He puts the Bulldogs in a good position as they grab on to momentum and will look to keep it as this period continues. So this game is knotted at two. At just about seven minutes gone here through the second period, Gannon gets on the board. Here come the Tigers back the other way, though. Lots of speed fresh off that goal from Stewart, but he stood up right in front of the Georgia bench. Bay with a couple of hits as he took out Eberle, too. We're not used to seeing Stewart on the receiving end of those kind of big hits, Joe. Yeah, we mentioned in the first period how both teams are being physical. As this four-check working for Auburn, but able to get out. Adler steps around the check of Henderson. Here comes Eberle. He's got Stewart streaking. Nice move. Eberle back door. Stewart couldn't get the shot away. Trying to center it three dogs deep down there as Henry regains control. And here come the Tigers back the other way with speed. Here's Daly. No one with him. He stops up and plays it across the ice for Henry. Henry walks onto it. Good stick from Martin to break it up. As they chase it back into the corner, Daly falls down. Fighting for it is Hagen. Trying to battle through the check. Stewart with it, turns it over at the half wall. Here's Daly once again, another good play by Hagen to break it up, but it's not out on the clearing attempt. Franklin with it, looking for someone in front, but Hagen comes away with it for Georgia. Eberly, nice move to step around the check there. Clem or, uh, Auburn throwing a lot of big body checks right in front of their own blue line here, or the blue line right in front of their own bench, rather. 
But this one's going to go for icing and a faceoff in the Auburn zone. Yeah, we mentioned the physicality multiple times. This is the first time I think UGA has been outplayed in that speed and physicality part as the physicality has just been poor from the UGA side. So instead of trying to double down in that area, try and get it back, I think they're playing a little more natural, a little more free-flowing with their passes and trying out this finesse thing that they have been good at when they've had to go to it. They like that speed and physicality aspect, but right now Auburn has that, so UGA has relied in this period on the finesse, and it's been working. Off the tie-up, Crawford comes away with it for Georgia. The second line's been a little bit invisible here for Georgia through this one. Hedquist usually been a factor through the first three games that we've seen him in a Georgia uniform, but he hasn't done a whole lot tonight. Had a turnover on the first goal. Looking to right the ship here, though, with the dogs getting some momentum. And a good forecheck here from the rookie, Hedquist. Start to a good shift here for Georgia, trying to get some extended zone time. Auburn looking to break it out. They'll fire it off the glass, but not out. Good play by Martin. Here's a chance in front. Shot saved by Denk. A great chance in front from Hedquist, looking to extend his goal streak, but Dank comes up big down low. Yeah, good job by Dank there to position himself well, so that puck goes into his body no matter what after it was bouncing around in front. Good job there. As this game all knotted up, it's really going to be if Auburn can get their momentum back because right now it's all Ice Dogs. Face off one cleanly by the Tigers. It's Willoughby Ray trying to play it up the boards. He does. Here comes Runchi. Chipped off the glass, but Martin pops it back out to center ice. Willoughby Ray in front of the dog's bench. Hedquist in hard on the forecheck. He stood up. A nice hit there from, from Willoughby Ray. And here come the Tigers back the other way. Great poke check at the blue line from Hogan to break it up. But the Tigers get it back deep on the second chance. Hogan chasing. Lange on his back. Played across to the ice dog's D-man, Martin. Parente with it, able to fire it to center ice, but it's chopped right back into the dog zone. Hogan with it, fighting for it at the side of the goal, almost turned it over. This one up to the point. Bardo in hard off the bench, able to get a stick on that one and get it out of the zone. Here's Parente walking onto it. Crawford back door, sticks the stick out. Couldn't get a shot off, though, as that one just goes around the tape. A great chance for Crawford back door. Yeah, great pass up the boards. Parente controls it, and then the pass over just a little bit too far out in front for Crawford. This one should go for icing as Strauss beats it out, and we'll have another faceoff in the Auburn zone. Right now I have shot totals UGA 21, Auburn 15. I had Auburn coming into this period with 14, so right now through the first 10 minutes just one shot on goal for them while UGA has added seven or eight. So it's been all Ice Dogs, of course, adding that big point to the board and nodding it up. Face off one by Georgia in the offensive zone. Shot by Poole, turned away by Dink. Big pad save through the screen, and here come the Tigers back the other way. Noah Henry, good stick by Strauss to break that one up as it skitters down into the corner. Here come the Dogs back on the breakout. Robbie Whitwer skates onto it right through center ice, steps around a man. Whitwer with a shot turned aside by Dink and up into the netting. So another faceoff inside the Auburn defensive zone. Yeah, I would like to see Whitwer try and drop that off to the trailing man next time, then screen Dank. Mention now Dank has struggled sometimes seeing the puck with a screen in front of him. So would have been an interesting play, but instead gets the shot on goal, and now the Ice Dogs haven't had too many clean wins, but this would be a big one for Mazaros. Faceoff one to the boards. And Punzenberger pins it. Mazzaro skates onto it. Trying to play it back up to the point. Circles back. Fires it down in behind the goal. Still digging for it. Mazzaro's in the corner. Chipped around Poole. And this one will leave the zone. Back out to center ice. Here's Chuck Bay with it. Stepping into him was Strauss in the corner. Here is Daly fighting for it with Donato. Donato skates away. But it's taken away by Bay in the high slot. Poole able to recover and punch it down into the corner. Bay with a big check there on Poole as he takes that puck to the boards. Strauss in to help out his D partner. Three ice dogs in deep, Donato backs off as we got a scrum here to the left of Testino. Referee saying to move it. Donato comes back in to help out. 
Not sure who's pinning it to the wall there, but the puck's stuck against the skate. Good job here to get Poole out and Mazaros in. Fresh legs for the Ice Dogs. Puck finally squirts back out to the point. Auburn regains control. Pass back to the point man. Fired back in. Bay with it in the corner once again. He's pinned to the wall. Picked up. Here's a shot in front. A good poke check there by Poole to break that one up on almost a sure shot from the high slot from Avery. Yeah, Poole out of position, but good recovery. As this one's fired in around the boards, Poole chasing it. He'll just chop at it. Punzenberger trying to get it out to center. That one didn't cross the blue line, though. Second chance does. As Mazzaros can't get it deep, though, here come the Tigers back the other way once again. Here's a shot glove by Testino, and he will hold on to it. Good job by Testino there. Similar to Dank, you're not going to beat him when he can see it the whole way. That was Auburn, despite all that zone time, a lot of it being the scrum in the corner. They had a lot of offensive zone time. That was their first shot in all of that, and it wasn't a good one. As said, Testino not going to be beat on anything like that. So Auburn still a little bit reeling, trying to bring it back in towards their side, but not the greatest shift they've had all night considering their first period. This second one not going their way. Some tired dogs change third line or Third line back out there for Georgia, Eberly, Stewart, and Adler. Like we said earlier, they've been moving the most out of these ice dog lines. As Gannon walks it across the blue line, the recent goal scorer for Georgia. Plays it back to the point. Stewart corrals it with a shot. That one just goes wide. Might have gotten deflected on its way to the net. Walks back onto it again. His shot just goes wide. As Gannon corrals it at the point once again. He'll walk the line. Fires it back down to Eberly. Drops it off looking for Burnett, but that's a turnover at the blue line. Here come the Tigers back the other way. Breakaway chance. Great back check from Burnett to break that one up as they never got a shot away. Great second effort from Burnett to make up for that turnover on the blue line as Stewart breaks that one up, but a nice toe drag. Here's a shot from Duchman blocked in the, in the high slot by Eberly, and the Dogs will regroup. Lots of great chances there for Auburn right in front of the net. Yeah, Burnett makes the original turnover as there's one in the offensive zone now. Adler trying to walk it down from the point, taking off his stick. They wave off icing. They say Burnett got a piece of this one. I don't think Burnett was anywhere near that one. Played back by Martin. Fired off the glass and chipped into the zone by Crawford. Henderson plays it up the wall. Here's Pats with it for the Tigers. Dropped off for Ducheman. Traffic through center ice. Henderson comes up with it, lays it in to the right of Testino. Here's Franklin with it now. Brooks Franklin in the corner. Looking out front, he had Ducheman streaking, but he couldn't get the shot away. Played back in behind the goal, looking for the centering pass. Good clear by Martin to get that one to the boards, and here comes Hedquist back the other way. Hedquist trying to walk through a man. Takes it around the other side, curls back, waits for help. Plays it over to Hogan. He'll dust it off. His shot goes over the net. Trying to get it around Pats. It just goes a little too high off the stick of Hagen. He'll, he'll hold it at the line once again in front of the Georgia bench. Across to his partner, Martin. His shot tipped at the point. Kept in by Hagen. But it's turned over, and here come the Tigers back the other way. Here's Patillo with a shot saved by Testino as it goes into the corner. Hagen chasing it in to help Patillo is lane. Here's a shot from the point. Tipped. Testino with a save. That one wasn't going on net, but Lane's just got a stick on it. Testino able to react quickly and keep that one out of the back of the net and keep this one tied at two. That's all about good positioning for Testino. Like you said, that one's not going in. It's easy as a goalie to get a little bit lazy getting over to that left side. Anytime you got to push off one of the legs, sometimes you're just a little bit tired. Testino always giving 100%, puts himself in a good spot there holding that post because that was an excellent tip. If he's not right there holding that goal post, that goes in. Good job by Testino, as right now, Auburn has regained the momentum. Four shots to only UGA's one in the past about five minutes. The referee's discussing something with someone on the UGA bench. I think it was straight to Coach Campy. You can sense the frustration coming from the Georgia bench right now. A lot of missed opportunities in this game. Able to tie it here about halfway through the second period. Five minutes left to go in the second. We are still tied at two. As the faceoff is won by the Tigers, shot just goes wide of the net off the stick of Fleet. 
Lange corrals it, fires it in deep. We got a penalty coming up. It looks like it's going to be on Whitworth. Empty net here for the Tigers. Extra attacker on. Hogan gets a stick on it, though, and we got a power play coming up for Auburn. We'll see if Whitwer says anything to the referee. Interesting to see what the call is for. As it looked like Whitwer brought his man to the ground originally, 16 Will Condon, and then it looked like there was no call until after. I couldn't see the call there, Torn. Did you see what that was? I didn't see what it was. I mean, it looks like Whitmer took his man down at the point, like you said. Yeah, so. just interesting, a little bit of delay on that call. So another power play upcoming here for Auburn. They're one for two on the night. Face off one in the offensive zone. Here's Dutchman with a drive blocked by Mazaros. Second chance goes again into Mazaros' foot. And this one will leave the zone. Here comes Parente down the right wing side with speed. Short-handed. Evan Parente with a shot gloved by Denk. And he's forced to hold on to it. A good shot from Parente to get the offensive zone draw. So it was interference on Whitwer. So that's why he's in the box for two minutes. We'll see how that plays out. A good job there from Mazaros to not only block that shot, but get up and chip it out of the zone. He'll be on the offensive zone draw now. We'll see how he plays this, a man down. Looking for the quick shot was Mazaros, but a good stick from Fleet to win that one back before Mazaros to get a stick on it, and here come the Tigers back the other way. Here's Duchemin looking for Fleet. Puck goes in front of his stick. Lange in on the four check. Strauss back there for Georgia. Played back up the boards. Here's Fleet with it on the half wall. And they'll set something up here on the perimeter. Runchi cross ice for Duchemin back up to the point. Patillo scored earlier from right here. Here's a shot blocked in front by Strauss. Testino fighting through the screen, a man right in front of him. Played back up to the point, Patillo back to Duchman. Cross ice looking for Runchi, but it's, he loses an edge. Here's a shot low and close from, that was Henry Lange, but he couldn't get it on net. Tiger still with control of it down low here to the right of Testino. Poole takes his man to the boards. Mazzaro's trying to fire it, but not out. Parente gets the second chance, and he'll get all of that one as the Ice Dogs get a change shorthanded. Quick up, though, for Auburn. Here's Patillo, has a power play goal in this one. He'll walk it down the right wing side. That shot just goes wide. Takes a weird bounce off the stanchion, but Gannon will take that one and rip it down the ice. What a great shift from Mazaros. Whitwer in the box. He's going to be in that position Mazaros is usually in, pounding the puck at the blue line. Mazaros did an excellent job as replacing him. 20 seconds left to go here on the Auburn power play and the penalty to Robbie Whitwer as it goes back to the other side of Testino. Here's Bay with it, back up to the point. Noah Henry couldn't hold on to it as it skips over his stick and back out to center ice. He'll corral it, gain some speed through center. Henry walking into the slot. His shot gets a piece of Testino's glove, a little knuckleball there as it had a weird bounce off the stick of Henry. Here's a chance for Bay walking off the half wall, but it's taken away by Burnett. Bardo trying to play it out to center ice. Adler replaces Whitwer out of the box, and we are back to even strength. Good penalty kill, not the best you've ever seen, but no great opportunities for Auburn besides the bouncing puck in front. Donato able to keep that one from going back to center ice. He'll step around the check, back up to Burnett. Here's a shot, that one tipped in front and it goes out of play. And we'll get a face off likely inside the Auburn zone. Yeah, and all of a sudden Auburn has kind of stormed back here. I have him one shot less in score, shots on goal as I'm even at 22. So after a dominant first start to this period, that could have been two, three goals instead of one for the Ice Dogs. They'll have to settle with this game just being tied as Auburn has got some fire in them as the gasoline burns bright for them right now. Again, an issue here on the puck drop. The linesmen have been very picky about the positioning of these players on the face-offs. Of course, in this league, you get two chances before you get a penalty. That's how they do it. They don't kick out the center for a face-off infraction. And, and it looks like they might take one here. Yeah, as they're talking to the scoreboard. So it is going to be a penalty on Auburn, and that's got to hurt. That's Jack Sparago. And all of a sudden, out of thin air, 
Sparago is going to go into the box, and the Ice Dogs are going to have a power play. That's not a call that you see these referees make a lot tonight. They, like I said, they've been very picky about positioning on these faceoffs. You'll see every now and then the linesman at center hold up one finger. He's telling them that's one more until you get a penalty. So they finally call it this time on Auburn. Looks like they've been talking to Georgia a lot about it so far tonight. Yeah, that's the first time I think we've seen that ever. I've never, I just learned about that rule this week. So power play opportunity here for Georgia. Here's Mazaros on the half wall trying to get something going here. Different line than we've seen start the first two as Bardo's line is on the bench here. Here's Mazaros looking for Donato in front. Shot at the side of the goal goes wide. And, and a man boarding. goes down hard. That's Mazaros. He's slow to get up. And we might have a five on three here, Joe. Yeah, I think that might even go as boarding. We'll see. It looked like a cross check definitely to the head and neck area of Mazaros. Glad to see him pop up because that was extremely dangerous. As number 17 will head to the box for Auburn. Cross-checking is the signal. Yeah, cross-checking. Didn't really get that speed in the boards, but it was in that head and neck area. That's James Willoughby Ray. So all of a sudden, your main penalty killer in Willoughby Ray out in front is now in the box. UGA going to have two minutes of five on three, Torin, which we love because it means that there's more offense, and in this case, it's offense for the Ice Dogs. And we've got... Another face-off infraction on Georgia. There's that one finger held up there by the linesman. At this point, it's, it's a little ridiculous. Big five-on-three spot here for Georgia as they win the offensive zone draw. Punzenberger on the half wall. Long two-man advantage here for Georgia. Good chance to take the lead as Donato has it down in the corner. Plays it up to Burnett on the point. Here's Hogan with a drive. That one just goes wide. Burnett settles it at the point. He'll walk it right up to the top. Here's a shot looking for the tip for Mazaros. But it just goes wide. Donato is run over by Patillo. And this puck will leave the zone. The Auburn fans love that one. A little bit of extra shoving between Donato and Patillo. Cooler heads prevail as they skate it back into the zone. And Punzenberger with it. He'll stop up to set up on the perimeter. Played down the wall for Donato. Around the stick of Patillo, back to Punzenberger. Cross to Hagen. Here's Burnett settling it. Back to Hagen, playing catch with it. Back up top for Burnett, looking to get the shot. Hagen couldn't settle that one as it goes into his foot. Hooked up there by Duchemin, plays it back up to the point. Here's a drive from Punzenberger, blocker saved by Denk. And the Auburn bench on its feet to clap for their goalie there. Puck doesn't leave the zone. Punzenberger down low for Mazaros. Looking back door for Hagen. A good save by Dink. Puck still loose. Fired at the net weakly. And this one's loose and covered by Dink. Little extra shoving going on down there from Patillo and Hagen. Hagen, not a guy we're used to seeing like that. Yeah, I think that one might have even hit the post for Dink. As that one looked like it might have even drifted in, but goes off the post. Dink stays alive with it. Fights for it. About 49 seconds here on the clock. So the Ice Dogs will have 20 more, 24 more on the power play. On the five on three, excuse me. And then they'll end pretty much the period except four seconds on the five on four. Mentioned only one power play goal this year. This is the opportunity they need to break out. They need to double that total. That power play line we've seen most of tonight is back out there with Bardo at center, but this one bounces over the stick of Gannon on the clear. So the Dogs forced to regroup. Hard four check here from Daly. Parente skates it around the left wing, hounded by Daly in the corner. Great penalty killing from him. As Gannon settles it on the point, 30 seconds left in the period, five left on the first penalty here for Auburn. They'll get a man back in a second here. And here's a chance as he's out of the box. Skating onto it was Runchi off the bench. Almost too many men for Auburn, actually. One last rush in the period for Georgia if they hurry. As Bardo goes down at center ice, it looks like he was he I, took a shot there. I don't know how they missed that. That there's, was a clear penalty. And there's a little revenge shove there from Bardo. That should have been a five-minute on Auburn. And we got a penalty coming up here at the corner. It looks like they're going to take both of them at the end of the period. So the penalty expires for, for Auburn. Georgia does not capitalize on the long five on three. After 40, it's tied at two here in Columbus. We'll see you right back here for third period action. Don't go anywhere.
Kicks off is one by the dogs, and we are go. Georgia with control. Here's Mazaros down low looking for a shot at the side of the goal. Tip in front, he scores! Josh Mazaros with his second of the game. Two opportunity for the dogs. Steps around. Here's a shot, he scores! Will Donato on the pass from Punzenberger. It's a power play goal. Finally shoots, he scores. He shoots. Down low, Schwanekamp digging for it. Still loose. He scores! He shoots, he scores! Barks tore in that, boys. What a game. Conway walking in. His shot, he scores! Eklund Conway from the outside. Eklund with a shot, he scores! Down low, back door, he scores! by what a save! in victory formation. He scores! Three seconds left, two seconds. Flaherty settles it. Here's a shot at the horn and saved by Testino. Ice Dogs win!
there's few things more important to a hockey player than his hair. That's why the Ice Dogs only trust the best, the old-fashioned barber. Located at 1725 Electric Avenue, Watkinsville, Georgia. Go with the flow. Go with the old-fashioned barber. Our very own Ren Grimsley caught up with Ice Dogs goaltender Ryan Testino in between periods. Hello everybody, I'm Ren Grimsley. I'm here with goalie Ryan Testino. Ryan, the dogs have been excellent on the penalty kill all year. What's been working well so far? Uh, I would say just getting bodies out in front, you know, letting me be able to see the puck. Auburn tonight is putting like two guys in front of the net. And I think the biggest thing we're doing is just getting those bodies out. So, I mean, it makes it easier for me to track the puck. And, uh, yeah, it's been working well all season, like you said. Absolutely. And what do you want to see more of in this third period from your team? Uh, I think on the power play, we can uh, just, like, close in a little bit more, be able to get more chances that way. I feel like we're a little spread out right now. We're getting these chances, but we're not really utilizing the space and the time that we have. So, uh, yeah, that, that's what I would say. Thank you so much. Good luck out there in the third. Hello and welcome back for third period action live from Columbus, Georgia. I'm Torrin Smith. With me as always, Joe Kopcho and Ren Grimsley. We are here live from the Columbus Ice Rink, the home of the Auburn Tigers, where we are all tied up at two between the Ice Dogs and the Tigers. For the out-of-town scorers, the UGA Hockey D3 team trails Alabama D3 3-1 after two periods. But how about this one, Joe? Take us back to the second period. Yeah, of course, coming into the second period, a 2-1 game where Auburn was on top. So nice to see this game tied up. However, Dogs had a little bit more of an opportunity to score more than one. The one added on was none other than Jack Gannon, his first goal of the season. So Gannon, who had an assist, puts another point on the total for him. He's now at two, of course, and he was assisted by Mazaros, the well-known Tiger killer. He always plays well against Auburn and Clemson, so he had a hat trick against Auburn last year, six goals across the four games, so he also gets a point on the board. I think the real story was the lack of opportunities that Georgia converted on while they did get one, unable to add on more, especially when they had an almost full two-minute five-on-three. Yeah, some missed opportunities on both sides lead us to where we are now, two to two. And we'll likely start the period four on four as Bardo got tangled up with, I believe it was Patillo right at the end of the second period. So they will sort out the offsetting minors. I'm not sure we will. It looks like refs are content five with four. five for Auburn. It is gonna be a five on four. Auburn's gonna start on the power play, which is frankly ridiculous. Tough spot here for Georgia starting the period on the penalty kill, but we are go for third period action here in Columbus. Noah Henry taking his time to start the rush, plays it to his speedy winger. 
in Daly. Daly, the rookie, in behind the goal. Still with control, plays it to Bay on the half wall. Puck looks like it got caught up in a puddle down there from the Zamboni. But the Tigers regain control, whipped around and fired back down the length of the ice by Mazaros, though. And the Ice Dog will take a few seconds off the penalty here. It's a good opportunity to build momentum for both teams. The Dogs could kill this off. Here's a chance for Mazaros trying to get the shot away. They're going to call a slash on Mazaros here. That's a questionable call as he was going for the puck. That's frankly ridiculous again. That's a, the penalty on Bardo comes after he responds to getting cross-checked. Middle of the ice, puck 60 feet away. He goes to the box. And then, or the box, excuse me. And now Mazaros just trying to get a shot away. The defender for Auburn comes in, and all of a sudden Auburn's going to have a 75-second five-on-three. So a huge spot here for Auburn trying to retake the lead and put themselves up by one, a big, long five-on-three. Like you said, 75 seconds remaining on the penalty to Dan Bardo. Mazaros in the box now. Face off to the right of Testino. Now Auburn has a huge opportunity. Georgia couldn't capitalize on theirs, and now they're going to talk to the bench because the Georgia bench is more frustrated than we are up here, I assume. Remember, Georgia did not capitalize on theirs. If Auburn could, it would be a huge game-changing swing. A minute and 15 on the five on three, then 45 on the five on four. Face off one by the Tigers. Quick shot off the draw by Bay. Goes way over the net. Kept in at the line by Henry. He plays it across to Daly, back to Henry. Down low, he's got his man in the corner, Pats. Henry back across for Daly. He tees one off. That one's loose in front. Testino's gonna cover it. And a couple of extra shots from Whitwer and Bay down there in the corner as we get a face off inside the Georgia zone. Yeah, that whistle waited a little bit. Testino was on that. So interesting to see that they are letting these teams play a little bit more. Cam Dank has gotten a few early ones. Testino not so lucky there. We'll see if it goes another way, if he's able to cover one again. Face off to the right of Testino. And it's won by the Tigers. Whitwer quickly up on the puck. He wanted a call there as he got tangled up in the stick of Henry. Henry with it on the point, plays it across for Daly. Miscue there, but they keep it at the line. Daly toe picks, drops it off for Henry. Back to Daly with a shot, just, he scores! Callan Daly snipes it from the top of the circle, and the Tigers take the lead. Yeah, Tigers take the lead. Testino has to go to the next side of the goal. Five on three, always difficult. That lane just wide open, and it beats Testino glove side. Now, the worst part about it might be that the Tigers have 80 more seconds on the five on four. Weird series of events with perhaps some of the calls being made and it goes in Auburn's favor. Credit to them for actually converting when the Ice Dogs did not. We mentioned last year, Ice Dogs had all the power play goals. This has certainly shifted around. So Auburn with all the momentum right now, they take an early lead here in the third period. And we've got a penalty coming up here on Auburn. It's gonna be a hold to Jake Fleet. So a little four on four, Joe. Yeah, that evens it up a little bit more. And this will be Georgia's real first opportunity of this entire period to maybe get a little bit of revenge. As just a minute and 30 seconds in, the Ice Dogs will have four on four. They've been good on four on four. They're usually more speedy, more physical. However, Auburn has certainly showed that they've led in that category today. So the face-off to the left of Cam Dank. Bardo in to take the draw. He's been strong in that category tonight. Another bouncing puck off the draw. Bardo comes up with it. Parente digging for it in the low slot. But it's taken away by Patillo. He'll look cross ice, trying to get it across for Runchi, who will just beat out the icing. They wave it off. Testino was out to play it as Burnett got beaten the foot, or Gannon got beaten the foot race, rather. 
Here's Gannon with it. He's got a goal tonight. Turns it over in the circle, though, as Burnett caught a stick up high. No call. Maybe tried to sell it a little bit in front of the goal or in front of the referee. As Gannon takes it down the left wing side, trying to step around Willoughby Ray. Takes him to the wall. Gannon still with it. Plays it down low for Parente. Trying to get it over to Gannon, but a good poke by Willoughby Ray to break it up. Puck goes up in the air. Still battling for it. Gannon takes his man to the wall. Willoughby Ray in the other corner. Played back out, but not out of the zone. Burnett able to keep it at the line. Here's Parente with it. Fakes the shot. Walking down from the point, but he turns it over. Here comes Rucci back the other way as he's taken down cleanly by Parente. The Auburn fans and bench wanted to call there. But I think Rucci just lost his footing mostly. As this one in the high slot missed the stick of Donato, and here come the Tigers back the other way. Lange with it, all alone with Hagen. A good back check by Donato to break that one up as the penalty expires for the Dogs. we got a 40-minute power play here for Georgia. Donato skating it in across the line, drops it off for Hedquist. Down the right wing side, his shot easily snapped up by Denk, and he will hold on to it. And this is going to be the Ice Dogs' time to test their resolve as they're going to have 17 minutes in this game where they need to mount a comeback. The only time we've seen this so far in the Ice Dogs 3-0 season is against South Carolina where they were leading into the third period. So we'll see if they can dig deep for the first time. Bouncing puck off the draw, one by Georgia. Parente plays it to the point. Gannon over to Poole. Settles it. Back to Gannon at the top of the point. 20 seconds left. Poole with a drive. Saved by Dank. Poole regains it in the corner. Plays it back down behind the net for Hedquist. Looking for the centering pass to Poole, but it's cleared. 10 seconds left on the man advantage for Georgia. One last rush if they hurry. But Gannon doesn't look to be in a hurry as he'll stop it up behind the net. Moves it up for Poole down the right wing side. Three seconds left, and the penalty expires. Here's Hedquist down the left wing side. Takes the shot, saved by Dank, and he'll pounce on it. No rebound. Not the greatest four on four and then power play for Georgia. That'll be another one in the column of unsuccessful for their power play as they only had 40 seconds, about 45 actually, but could not convert. They'll see if they can take some of the momentum off their recent shots and try and put one on the board. Face off one cleanly by the Tigers in the defensive zone. As Henderson tries to skate it out, here's Stewart with a shot from the side of the goal. They got a stick on it, I think it was Henderson. Eberle shakes off the check from Avery, back up to the point. Hogan with a drive, looking for the tip in front was Adler, but a great glove save by Dink. And he will squeeze it once again for another face off. Yeah, I think Adler did get a piece of that. I think he chopped it down, and an amazing job by Dank to glove that. Not too sure, but Dank saw it the whole way and followed it and brought it into the glove. And that's how Georgia's going to have to beat Dank. Put traffic in front, get sticks on pucks, and get rebounds. That's what they've done all season, get garbage goals in front, and they're going to need that now in this third period. As they win the faceoff, but quickly turn it over. Hogan able to hold the line. Adler with it down in the corner. Takes the check there from Willoughby Ray. Stewart in to help out Adler. Trying to play it up the boards. Adler still fighting for it in the corner. Looking out in front was Stewart. He had a chance for the one-timer, but he just fanned on it. And this one will go all the way back to the Georgia zone. Yeah, and Stewart has had so many chances this game, and he's just been a little bit off. There's a great chance in front for Auburn as Hogan just overskated the puck, but he was able to recover and get it away from Daly. Stewart has just, just been a little bit off despite good positioning. And that's been the story tonight for Georgia. A lot of missed opportunities right at the side of the goal. Trying to get a little too cute with it maybe and force the pass across. Not getting clean chances in front. Here's a shot from outside. Goes over the shoulder of Testino but into the opposite corner. Good pin there by Punzenberger. He's got Stewart up ice. Played back by the Tigers. And there's almost a turnover. Henry skating onto it. He's got an angle, he shoots, he scores! Noah Henry on the turnover, and he converts to extend the lead to two. Just a poor turnover between Punzenberger and his teammate. Just a lack of communication as an ice dog goes off, and the puck was thrown back. I think that was Martin trying to get it to Punzenberger, or maybe the other way around as one of them was going off. And this is now the absolute best opportunity for the Ice Dog to test their resolve. They're up in shots this game, 30 to 25. 
They're out shooting the opponent. They're playing well. They just can't finish. They're not doing the small things right. And I think this is a good timeout from Coach Campy. Yeah, smart timeout for Campy to get his team a breather here. We're going to take a breather ourselves. We'll see you right back here in a minute. So following the timeout after the goal, it's 4-2 to two Auburn. Georgia trying to get something going here with plenty of time to mount a comeback. We've seen them do it before, but they look pretty out of it so far in this third period. There's a turnover through center. We got a power play coming up, though, for Georgia. So a great opportunity as it looks like Fleet will head to the box for two minutes for hooking. And like you said, a good opportunity. You get Fleet off the ice, one of their better players. He leads all of Division I AAU in points. We mentioned how Auburn has played UAB and Sinclair a little bit lower of competition on the pole, not D1. So they've ran up the score a little bit, but getting Fleet off the ice and getting an opportunity to try and do something here down two. Face off one by Bardo. Gannon able to hold it in. There's a shot looking for the tip in front was Bardo. Good traffic for Georgia on the power play. Poole had the shot. Still digging for it at the side of the goal was Hedquist. As that one got caught in traffic. Here's Gannon back on the point. He's got Poole with him. Cross for Hedquist. His shot saved by Dank as he pushed across to get the pad on it. Runchi takes this one to the boards. Digging for it hard is Bardo. Trying to help him out is Hedquist. Parente in to help too. He'll back off, Hedquist walking around, too many moves in front, Gannon holds the line. Here's a shot from Poole, blocked in front by Duchman. Gannon again, saucer pass across the pool, walking down from the point, good stick by Willoughby, ready to break it up, and it finally leaves the zone for the Tigers. Great penalty killing here for Auburn as they pin it into the Georgia zone after a couple of great blocks and poke checks to keep the Ice Dogs from shooting it. But here comes Gannon right back the other way. Here's a pass for Bardo in front again, trying to get too cute with the backhand pass as it goes into the feet of Bardo, and this one's cleared all the way down in on Testino. Great opportunities, but Auburn, Dank, and the defenders blocking all of them out in front. Here's Hedquist down the left wing side for Georgia, trying to walk to the net. Still with the puck, couldn't get it down low, though, and get a shot away. Testino's going to come out to play this one as he trips up. Number 22, Callan Daly. It's one of those dangerous plays out there. But here comes Parente back the other way for Georgia. He's got Gannon in front. Parente in behind the goal, around the other side. Plays it back in behind the net. Punzenberger in front looking for the pass. Parente fires it back down low. Here's a shot from the side of the net by Hedquist. Rebound saved by Dank. Couple of great saves. Hogging with it again, plays it across to Parente. Takes the shot off the crossbar. It got a piece of Dank's glove. Puck down in the corner, Punzenberger with it as the penalty expires. But Georgia still with pressure here on the five on five. Here's Hogan with it, curls it away from Fleet. Back up top for Gannon. Down low, he's got a man. Shot just goes wide as it hits Parente in the foot. Kept in at the line by Gannon. He takes the shot, looking for the tip in front was Hedquist, but Dank's able to fall on it and he will get a much needed whistle here for Auburn. If Auburn is able to keep this lead and come out on top, Dank just might one of them might have won himself MVP. That was about six saves in a row. One goes off the crossbar, gets a little bit help. His best save of that series, though, was off the rebound. He kicks it out left where the ice dog is sitting, ready to take a shot. He kicks off that right leg and gets all the way over and gets a piece of it. An excellent job by Dank. Face off to his left. Georgia trying to get that same zone pressure. Fresh legs out there for both sides though. Patillo with it, trying to skate it out for Auburn and he does. Here's Duchman with it through center, plays it across to the right wing for Franklin. 
Brooks Franklin looking at the goal. That one gets in on Testino, but he's able to play it to the corner. Everly chops it in behind the net. Hogan taken into the wall by Franklin. Hogan still fighting for it, comes away with the puck. He's got some space. Mishandled it again. We've seen that a few times from Hogan down there in the defensive zone. But Adler's able to skate it back the other way for Georgia. Trying to play it out in front. Everly with a shot. He scores! David Everly, his second of the game. And he cuts the lead to just one now in the third period. Great job by David Everly. But how about Sam Adler? Second assist of the night. 2-1-2. Two, two. Excellent passing from Adler to Everly. It works. They had the first goal in the night. Adler skates all the way down. It looks like he was almost going to lose it. He kept it right out in front of it, dangled a couple of defenders, got right behind the net, threw it out in front. And Eberle, I believe last week against Georgia Tech, he was my sanitation worker of the night. Again, out in front just digging, makes it 4-3. to three. Great job from Adler all the way down the ice and Eberle cleaning it up. That's Deuce's two goals for David Eberle, number two on the Ice Dogs. With 11.43 left to go here in the third period, Georgia with a little bit of signs of life. Signs of life, and it is well needed. Remember, they were down 2-0 to South Carolina where they would score three unanswered. That would be beautiful here. There's a turnover at center, though, by Donato. Here comes Chuck Bay back the other way for Auburn. His shot just goes wide. A good shot from the high slot. Didn't find the net, and here come the dogs back the other way. Punzenberger's got Donato. He had space, but will it be Ray on the back check? Able to chop that puck off of the stick of the Ice Dogs forward. Good keep by Strauss, but in stride, Henry picks it up, plays it up for Willoughby Ray. He's got a man back door, trying to shoot it across, but they couldn't get a shot away. Here's Henry on the line, plays it back down low. He's got Daly. Taken away from his stick shot, hit the referee. Georgia will skate it back the other way. Donato played across for Punzenberger, and he'll just dump it into the near corner. Donato in on the four check. He's got it in the corner. Got a man helping him out here. Trying to center it for Punzenberger. Couldn't find the tape. Mazaros just chops that one in deep on the rolling puck. Willoughby Ray trying to get it out. Runchi with it. Dogs in on him. Nice play by Mazaros. He's got some space. Walking to the net. Good play by Patillo. Donato trying to follow up the rebound. He gets control. Here's Mazaros trying to play it across for Punzenberger. Turnaround shot. Hits a man and Dink's going to catch it and hold on to the rolling puck. This is more the Ice Dogs team we're used to seeing. Good pressure here. They get the goal and now they're up to 40 shots. It's hard when you have 10 minutes left in a game and you already have 40 shots to swallow the taste that you're down one, but you just need to convert on the opportunities. You've had them. It's told by the shot total. Just need to get it in the back of the net. Good fighting out in front there from Mazaros. Couple of good shifts in a row here for Georgia. They've got to put together some more of those if they got to get a goal in this second half of this third period. Crawford with a nice back check, able to take that puck off the stick of Fleet. But the pass misses the mark from Burnett. Punzenberger couldn't get, or sorry, that was Parente, couldn't get a stick on it. This one's going to go offsides on Auburn, so we'll get a face off outside of the Georgia zone. And like you said, a couple of good shifts, and now it's up to this second line. I think this has been the line that could improve the most. Headquist with a couple turnovers. He's scored in every game so far. Parente not saucing the passes like he normally does. Nice move by Headquist on the draw to step through his man. And he'll try to take it through the slot. Blocker saved by Dink. Crawford swatting at the bouncing puck. Couldn't get a stick on it. Headquist down there in the corner. Fighting for it. It rims around the other side. And it's taken by Condon. Looking for the stretch pass to Lane. Good back check by Crawford, but Lange gets it right back, though. He'll skate it across the line. They're going to call a penalty on Georgia here. I'm not sure what the call is going to be. I think it's going to be a knee. A trip on Crawford. Maybe stuck the leg out last minute there. We'll take a look at it here on our replay. I think he got that knee out there. It is a trip, as you called, Soren, and that is a shame for the Ice Dogs, something that just can't happen there as you need to be pressuring this defense of Auburn and now all of a sudden you're going to have to do it while down a player, down a score. You're going to be worried about the penalty kill here. Nine minutes and 31 seconds left torn. I don't think you try any two explosive breakouts. Just kill this off and play the last 7.30 five on five. Dan Bardo, one of the few bright spots for Georgia in this one so far. And he's back out there on the penalty kill. Lots of minutes for him on the first power play and first PK unit as he loses that defensive zone draw. 
An area he's been pretty good in tonight. Here's a drive by Henry, blocked by Whitworth. Right into the ankle, that one's gotta hurt. But he stays up and on the ice. Hogan able to chop it out to center. We got a penalty coming up here on Auburn. They're gonna call interference on Chuck Bay. And Hogan's gonna get it to it a little bit with him. Hogan, that was an excellent play. He committed, and when you do that on the penalty kill, you have to win. He skated on that puck hard, won it, chopped it up the boards at bay, didn't let him continue to it. And all of a sudden, Torin, we thought maybe the Ice Dogs would have to kill off a power play. They're gonna have a four on four, and then of course, 17 seconds just around there of their own. So a lucky break for Georgia as we'll get some long four on four minutes here. Eberly with two goals back out there at the center position. He's got Mazaros, Hagen, and Martin with him. Wins the draw, but it goes right back between the two D-men. Testino was out to play it, but it rolls into the corner. Martin lays a good check there to separate the puck from the body, and the dog's trying to break it out. Hagen curls back from the aggressive four check of Henry. Here comes Truman Hagen through center. Down the right wing side, the big Ice Dogs defenseman stepping around Patillo, but a good stick to break that one up. This one comes back through the high slot. Everly stepping down from the point. Couldn't hold the line, though. But Georgia regains control at center. Mazaros with it at the red line. He'll skate it across the blue now. Down the left wing side. Mazaros cutting to the net. His shot weakly in on goal. Easily saved by Dink. And here come the Tigers back the other way. Henry with it. Cross ice for Patillo. Each of them with a goal tonight as Henry goes off for a change. Patillo is hounded by Eberly and the Dogs come back with the puck. Yeah, luckily for the Dogs, their consistent offense so far there made Auburn need to change. They almost had a three on one. Here comes Eberly down the right wing side. He's got Mazaros with him. Eberly poked away from the stick by Henderson. And here come the Tigers. Good back check from Mazaros, breaks it up. Strauss corrals it at center, and he'll skate it right back down into the Tigers' zone. Dumped into the near corner while his forwards are changing. Strauss still in on the forecheck, looking for the stretch pass to Runchi, but it's out in front of him, and Poole will beat the icing, so we'll get a face-off in the Auburn zone. Seven minutes and 45 seconds left here in this one. Dogs are being tested really for the first time. This is the first Division I matchup for Auburn. They're having a good showing. They're 3-0-1 on the season. This game playing out like it is the CHS College Hockey South game of the week. Face off, won by Hedquist. 13 seconds left on the penalty to Crawford. Poole fakes the shot, walks into the high slot, his shot right into the chest once again of Dink. And he'll take that all day. His 43rd shot of the night, he's got three goals against. 40 saves, not too bad for Cam Dink. Yeah, a good showing from Dink. He's been great. He struggled a little bit this year, but shot counts might be off when you have a 17-1 and 17-2 game. However, mentioned last season, almost a 900 save percentage. Defensive zone draw, won by the Tigers. Five seconds left on the penalty to Crawford as this one goes over the low glass once again. So we'll get another faceoff in the Tigers zone. Crawford will take one more second in the box. We'll see Crawford likely to Hop on the bench, we'll see who they bring in as Hedquist will be on the draw. Face off, won by Hedquist, back to the point, Gannon over to Poole, walking down, he's got Parente back door, couldn't get the shot away as he settles it, and Dank's gonna fall on it as he pounces on the pass to the front of the net. So another face off, Georgia with 10 seconds of power play time here before Chuck Bay leaves the box. Yeah, and Crawford actually came straight out of the box, good decision there as when you only have about 16, 17 seconds, you want to get immediate offense. Expect Hedquist to try and win this back. Crawford to crash the net and maybe a slap shot from Poole. Face off won by the Tigers. Crawford quickly in on the forecheck. Poole able to hold the line just barely. Here's Parente walking down, saved by Dink. Loose puck in front. It goes down to the corner. Parente still battling for it. Bay out of the box. We're back to even strength. Hedquist fighting for it. Gannon able to hold the line on the clearing attempt from Runchi, but it comes back out on the second chance. Gannon takes a check there at the blue line. Hedquist trying to get it in deep, but he couldn't get across the blue. And here come the Tigers back the other way. Franklin with it. Great back check from Gannon after he stepped up on the last play. But another turnover there from Crawford. This one fired long down the ice, but Hedquist couldn't handle it. And it's an icing on the dogs. 
Not too sure what Crawford was doing there. He didn't come in hard on that back check. Had someone else pick up the slack and then just a really lazy pass. He's going to stick out there. I know he just came out of the box, but might need a little bit of a breather here. Get some fresh legs on. We'll see how that plays out. Score update from Pelham. Matthew Schwanekamp gets his first goal of the season for the D3 Dogs, and it's 3-2 Bama in the third period. So a comeback of their own maybe for this Georgia team's counterpart. As Parente is trying to poke that one in deep, but it's taken away by Patillo. Poole in behind his own net. Trying to break it out. Back up the boards for Poole. He's got Hedquist in stride. Parente with him. Stops up on the blue line. Hedquist takes a shot from way outside. Goes way over the net. Might have gotten tipped. Gannon's shot easily saved by Dink. There's been a lot of those shots from Georgia. That big shot number on this guest side, a little inflated by a lot of these flip shots right into the chest or the glove of Dink. Yeah, a lot of those shots where it looks like they're just trying to develop something. Dink, of course, we've mentioned, can't really beat him one-on-one. -on -one. We'll see how the strategy plays out here in the final six minutes. Face-off won by Mazaros. Martin with it on the point. Plays it across to Punzenberger on the half wall. Here's Donato with it back to Punzenberger. Martin up top. Gets the shot off. Looking for the tip was Mazaros, but a good stick lift by Henderson. Keeps him from getting some stick on it. Here's Mazaros at the side of the net, hammering it into the pad of Dink. Punzenberger loose in front off the back of Dink as it skirts into the corner. Mazaros still with it, looking for Punzenberger in front. Kicks it to his stick. Here's a shot, another block there in front by the Tigers. As Bay gloves it down, he'll skate it back the other way for the Tigers. Chuck Bay, a good back check from Donato, breaks it up as this one goes up into the stands just over the glass. One of the better opportunities for Georgia. I don't know how that one stayed out off the back of Dank. Yeah, Dank, another good job. I think that goes off the back of his helmet, top of the shoulder area, and it just goes over. Mazaros was trying to stuff it in, and then some good follow-up attempts. Dank now approaching 50 saves on the night, 49 shots for Georgia. Of course, those three goals. Dank has been so excellent. Hogan chips it off the glass, trying to get Stewart in stride, but they're going to say it's offsides. So another face-off coming up here. 5.22 left to go in regulation. Georgia still trailing Auburn by one. It's 4-3 to three Tigers. We'll see how game plans kind of change as we go on. Coach Campy had the timeout early in this third period. It worked as Georgia added a goal. He's going to be missing that going on, though. Face-off won by the Tigers, fired back out to center ice. And they're just playing defense right now, not trying to get a whole lot of zone time is the home team. Just trying to keep Georgia off the board. They're doing a good job of keeping them to the outside right now. Three guys hard on the puck for the Tigers as this one leaves the zone. Not going to be enough for icing. Hogan back there getting chased by Lange. Hogan drops it off for Martin. And here comes Stewart back the other way, trying to gain some speed. He's going to take a check here at center ice, but he fights through it. Here's Stewart into the corner. He stiff arms a man down there in the corner. Another great hit by Stewart. Here's a chance in front. Martin with a shot saved by Dink. Sorry, it was blocked that time by Runchi. As he toe picks on the clearing attempt, another great chance for Georgia. Just gets blocked in front by these Tigers defenders. Here comes Patillo. His shot blockered by Testino, and it's up into the netting. So we'll get a face off in the Georgia zone. Yeah, that one Dank a little bit far out of his net. So a good opportunity there, but a good job from TJ Runzi to come over starting wing for Auburn tonight and block that in right in his stomach. I don't even think he knew he had it. It kind of just popped out when he stood up. So good job by him to save Dank one more shot he would have had to save. Face off one by Georgia in the defensive zone. Puck skips over the stick of Crawford. They say it's no icing. Hedquist hard on the four check. He's got Parente to help him. Parente takes the check there. Centering pass for Crawford. He couldn't get the shot away. And the Tigers clear it out to center. Strauss regrouping. He's got Poole. Four minutes left here for Georgia to mount this comeback. Strauss through center ice. Steps around Franklin. Wanted a call, but no dice there for Strauss as it stays out at center ice. Franklin chops it back into the Georgia zone. Stick taps for him from the Auburn bench as he takes a few more seconds off the clock here. 
Poole with it, stretch pass, looking for Hedquist. Broken up, but not enough on the stick as Hedquist got it back. This one chopped to the center, and it's kicked away by Henderson. Good check there by Strauss to break that one up, and Georgia will come right back in on the attack. Parente trying to step around Henry. Good stick from the Tigers forward to break that one up, and here come the Tigers back the other way. Daly with it. His shot turned away by Testino at the post. Hedquist corrals it, plays it back for Strauss. He'll look way up ice. He's got Poole, though, closer to him. Stretch pass over to Hedquist on the left wing side. Steps around the check. Here's James Hedquist. Drops off for Parente. Down low. He's got his man in front. Loose puck. Hedquist with a shot. He's hit. That one just goes over the net. Crawford hacking at it. Gannon down from the point. Lots of traffic in front for Georgia as they pull it back to the perimeter. Parente's shot finds right into the glove of Dank once again. And that was officially Dank's 50th save of the night, so excellent job. And again, that was Puck was just bouncing out in front. Dank unable to cover it on first attempt. And it was just so close for the Ice Dogs. Multiple chances. It feels like they just missed by five, six inches multiple times this game. We'll start keeping an eye out on Testino as it looks like we're going to have a timeout Auburn. 51 saves for Dink, and I bet you about 20 of those are right into his glove or right into his chest. He's not having to move for a whole lot of these. Georgia not doing a good job of clogging in the front of the net and getting those second chance opportunities on some low rebound shots. And that's what they'll need to do here following this timeout. 2.47 left for them to get a goal and tie this one up. Like you said, Joe, likely going to see Testino leave the net in probably about 30 seconds, if I had to guess, if not right now. Yeah, we'll see. If they have a drawn-up plan off the face-off, they'll likely take Testino out now. However, the lack of face-off wins tonight would suggest Testino stays in. Coach Campy also likes to trust his offense. That has been the strong suit, of course, throughout almost all of Ice Dogs history has been their offense. Tonight, their defense has let them down a little bit with defensive zone turnovers. The offense has been good, just hasn't converted on every opportunity. Or A lot of them have gone pretty much dull. So we'll see if he takes Testino out in maybe a minute, gives his offense a little bit more time to work five on five. Trust them a little bit more as Mazaros will eventually take the draw for UGA. So 2.47 left to go. Six guys on the ice for Georgia. Gannon will go back to the bench. Testino is still in the net. We'll see if that is a sign of how quick Testino is going to come off. Likely just miscommunication. Face off one by Mazaros off the tie up. Hogan looking for the quick shot. It's up in the feet of Matthew Avery. Dogs gain control though. Down there in the corner as this one is rimmed around the boards by Patillo. Lands trying to get it out. Kept in at the line, they say, by Burnett, but the second chance does make it out to center ice. Here comes Patillo back the other way. Kept to the outside by Hagen. Here's Burnett. Settles it down, 218 left, as they try to mount a rush here. Looking for the long stretch pass, but it's easily gloved down by the Tigers. Shot from the outside by Fleet. Rims all the way around the boards as it missed the net. Fired in on goal again, easily blockered away by Testino. Mazaros way up at center ice, looking for the stretch pass. Donato circles back. Good pressure from the Tigers, keeping the dogs from the long stretch passes here as Henderson chops this one away from the net. Willoughby Ray rims it around the boards. Punzenberger there on the four check for Georgia. In behind the goal, Mazaros fighting for it with Punzenberger. Testino up at the hash marks now. A minute and a half left in the game, but this one will leave the zone off the errant pass from Punzenberger. Quick up, though. Here's Donato on the blue line. Stops up, looking for help. He's got Punzenberger down the left wing side. Punzenberger cross ice. He's got Poole. Couldn't settle the pass down as he just chips it in the corner. Testino to the bench. Six skaters on for Georgia. Tyler Stewart off the bench. Puck down there in the corner to the left of Dank. Back up at the point, Poole settles it. Trying to get a shot off, this one bounces through the slot as Poole just whiffed on it. This one's gonna go all the way down to center ice. Bad play there by Poole, Bay walking onto it, tipped at the blue line just wide as we are less than a minute away from the end of this period. Poole walking it down the right wing side. 
Trying to get something going here for Georgia late in the third. Easily gloved by Dink. And he will take the face off here with 48 and a half left to go in regulation. I don't think that's too bad an idea. We've mentioned how maybe the Ice Dog's just throwing it in on Dink too much, but that at least wins you an offensive zone draw. You just won the last one, and you're likely going to have six skaters. Two are going to crash the net, and I assume one of them is going to be ready to slap shot. No timeouts for John Camp. Quickly trying to put a play together over there on the bench. Fresh legs out there. Mazaros, the extra attacker. Hedquist couldn't win the draw. Dushman clears it to the corner. Rimmed around the boards. Takes a weird bounce off the stanchion. Hits the referee. Lucky break for the Tigers. Here comes Willoughby, Willoughby Ray back the other way. Steps around a man. He's taken down as Gannon skates it back the other way. 34 left in the period. Jack Gannon through center ice. Drops it off for Hedquist on the half wall. Looking for center. No one there. Bouncing around in front. Still loose. Mazaros with it. Couldn't keep it at the line. Great second effort by Lange to clear it as it goes all the way back to the Georgia zone. Poole going to need to get it up quick. Less than 20 seconds left in the period. Poole down the right wing side, trying to skate it to the net. Steps around a man, taken to the corner. 10 seconds left. They'll pin it to the boards. All the dogs need to try and dig that one out. Poole plays it to the point. Not enough time as it leaves the zone. Tigers win. A disappointing effort for Georgia. 52 shot, or 55 shots, 52 saves for Cam Dink. As the Tigers upset the Dogs with a four to three victory here at home. Hard to say upset as both these teams so great, but I think the Ice Dogs did come into this game considering themselves the favorite and they were shown up for the first time all season. It looked like the first time they were really spooked. The first period did not go their way as they struggled. The whole first period in physicality and speed and that was enough for Auburn as Georgia tried to mount a couple comebacks but fell short. Auburn a great played game. Their offense was consistent. Their defense is a little bit of the question mark, but with Cam Dank's excellent performance tonight, despite the defense letting up 55 shots, it did not matter. An excellent game from both teams, but Auburn will take the first of the series. We'll be back on Sunday around 2 p.m. for game two, and if it was anything like this one, it should be a good one, Torin. So thank you all for joining us. Stick around for some post-game thoughts. We'll see you back here in just a minute. Thank you all for joining us here for this broadcast of UGA Hockey. The dogs fall short on the road to the Tigers in this first of two, ser uh, first of two games in this weekend series against the Tigers. A 4-3 win for Auburn. Joe, who are the three stars of the game? Yeah, certainly not the outcome the Ice Dogs wanted. However, an Ice Dog is at the third star. Eberly, two goals, the first and the third. He did his best, cleaned one up out in front and an excellent shot to begin the first period scoring for the Ice Dogs about a minute and 30 seconds in. So Eberly gets that third star. Do want to have an honorable mention to the man that assisted him twice in Sam Adler. And then it's going to be two Tigers to round it out. The first one, the two star is going to be Noah Henry. Noah Henry with two goals, the first and the third. And that would be enough to help his team out. A couple of one-on-ones that he got off turnovers, both the goals. He had a one-on-one -on -one after getting the turnover, beat his defender, 
and was able to get by Testino. And then the one star, it had to be Dank. Camden Dank in goal. Had 55 shots against and 52 saves. I'm not a math major, Torin, but that's a pretty good save percentage, whatever it may be. An excellent showing from him. He kept Auburn in this game. We mentioned a lot of floated in shots from the Ice Dogs, but when they got tough, when the going got tough, Dank stood up. So excellent job from him. He gets the one star just to wrap up. Third star, Eberly. Second star, Noah Henry. And first star, Camden Dank. Torin. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you all right back here on the UJ Hockey YouTube channel Sunday at 2 p.m. as these two teams will face off for their final game of this series. And go check out the UJ Hockey D3 channel tomorrow night. There will be a stream as the D3 Dogs take on Alabama. They are falling short right now as Bama just scored again to put it up to 6-2 to two now in the third period. But join us over there. For Joe Kopshow and Ren Grimsley, thank you all for joining us. I've been Torrin Smith. We'll see you next time.